Okay, let's draw some lipids. So lipids are fat molecules. Uh, they also include things like oils and waxes. Um, we're going to be talking about the ones that are inside of our bodies, so we're not going to worry so much about the other things. Um, you're familiar with some lipid molecules already because maybe you remember phospholipids that are in your cell membranes. Or, like we did in class, there are also these molecules with three tails and a glycerol head called a triglyceride. Uh, these are really common examples of fat molecules inside of living things. Um, but we are only going to focus on the tails of these, and the tails of these are a molecule called a fatty acid. You have to be able to draw two kinds of fatty acids, and those are saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. Now, there are some advanced levels of understanding with unsaturated fatty acids because uh, they can be pretty complex. Um, so to draw a saturated fatty acid, um, it's pretty easy. They both start off exactly the same way. Uh, the unsaturated ones just change a little bit. Um, so to draw a saturated fatty acid, you're going to draw a carbon with a double bond oxygen and an OH group on the end. Now this group is called a carboxylic acid group. Carboxylic acid group. And that's where the acid of fatty acid comes from. Now, the rest of this molecule is so easy to draw. You are going to add somewhere between 10 and 14 carbons tossed onto the end here. And each of those carbons, you're going to fill up with hydrogens. Remember our rule that carbon needs four covalent bonds. So this is the long part of the drawing here. The word saturated means to completely fill up so that it can't take anything in anymore. Think about a sponge. Have you ever soaked up so much water with a sponge that it just doesn't soak it up anymore and it kind of pushes it around? You've saturated that sponge so it can't be full up anymore. So a saturated fatty acid is a fatty acid that has as many hydrogens in it as possible. So this chain needs to have 10 to 14 carbons in it, and you just fill them all up with single bond hydrogens. So that's a saturated fatty acid. So if a saturated, acid, saturated fatty acid has as many hydrogens as possible, an unsaturated fatty acid doesn't. So an unsaturated fatty acid has fewer hydrogens. And the reason for that is there's some double bonds in between the carbons thrown in here. So we're going to do the same thing as before. We're going to add our carboxylic acid group on, which is what makes the acid part of the fatty acid. Then we're going to start making our long carbon chain. Now, at some point in time, you're going to throw in a double bond here. And that double bond is going to cause a little bend in the chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's good. All right. Um, we have just made a fatty acid, so let's finish filling in our hydrogens. But there's one thing that's going to tell me whether you're actually paying attention to this molecule or not. Remember that carbon requires four covalent bonds on it. And right here, right here, when you count up this carbon, it already has three bonds on it. And because it already has three bonds on it, this carbon right here is only going to have one hydrogen on it. And this one also, this carbon right here, also has three covalent bonds on it. And so because of that, it's also only going to have one hydrogen on it. So then we fill in the rest of these single bond carbons with hydrogens. Don't forget that the one at the end gets three because it still needs four bonds. Those are saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. Now this one that we just drew right now is called a monounsaturated fatty acid. Unsaturated fatty acid. And the reason that's called a monounsaturated fatty acid, that mono refers to the number of double bonds, and this only has one double bond in it. Now to be advanced, I'm going to ask you a, a few different things. Um, uh, the first thing is I might ask you to draw perhaps a 
dye or a triunsaturated fatty acid, which means you're going to add more double bonds in between carbons in there. And make sure you count those bonds up and add the correct number of hydrogens in there. Every time you throw a double bond in there, you need to add a little bit of a kink in it. That double bond sort of changes the direction that the tail goes in. Um, the second thing is, is there are two kinds of fatty acids, uh, unsaturated fatty acids, and those are cis and trans fatty acids. Cis and trans fatty acids. And the cis and trans has to deal with the, where the hydrogens are around that double bond. So I am going to kind of take this section right here and I'm going to redraw it down here. So I've got my carbon, carbon, my double bond, another carbon here. So let's fill in those hydrogens. So once again, I'm only drawing a part of this. Now, around this double bond, because the hydrogens are on the same side around that double bond, this is what is called a cis fat, unsaturated fatty acid. If we were to redraw this molecule, but instead of putting them on the same side, we put those hydrogens on opposite sides of each other. This is called a trans fatty acid. Now, this trans fatty acid is a lot more dangerous to us because this trans fatty acid has a high melting point, which means that it stays solid at room temperature. At room temperature. And so, because it stays solid at room temperature, it can uh, kind of coagulate and kind of uh, join together inside of your blood vessels. And as a result, it can clog up your arteries. So these trans fats are bad. So next time you go to McDonald's and they, they say that they're putting their, or they're doing their fries in no trans fats, what they're saying is, is that their fries are less likely to cause your blood vessels to clog up. Um, these cis fats have a lower melting point. These cis unsaturated fatty acids has a lower melting point. And because it has a low melting point, uh, they don't sort of coagulate out of your blood. Coagulate might be the wrong word there. But anyway, uh, they can stay in liquid form in your blood and not cause those buildups. All right, that's it.